My name is Jeff Crilly, and today we're going to be talking about how to get your club in the news and how to do a better job on Facebook and social media. Let's start with the traditional media because uh, print, radio, television, they're not going anywhere. They're, they're still around. They're a great way to get your club publicity. So we'll get right into it. If you could, why don't we type into Google uh, Plano Star Courier because if your club is in, in the reach of, uh, of your local paper, you want to start there. It's a, it's a great place to start. They, they always need stories. You've got good stories to tell. So as we pull up the Plano Star Courier, click on the home page and let's see some reporters who are covering Plano. Typically in a, in a small town paper like the Plano Star Courier, they're going to have four or five writers who are writing about city council, police and fire, maybe some local nonprofits. And so what we're looking for as we go to the home page is a feel-good story. Uh, you, you don't necessarily need to tell your story to the, the crime reporter. You want to tell your story to somebody who covers positive news. What I always tell people is go old school. Use the telephone. We've all kind of gotten away from it with the internet. We've gone high tech, but this is a high touch job right now. It's just a matter of selling a story to a, um, a man or a woman who buys stories for a living. That's what reporters do. So I believe in using the old fashioned telephone. Al Bell gave it to us 130 years ago, but we all forgot about it. You pick up the phone, you call uh, Conrad. If you call the main number to the paper, and most websites have the contact information right there on the home page, you call him up, and, and I always believe in beginning with a compliment. So you say to Conrad, hey, I really enjoyed your recent story about that soldier. Uh, you really captured the, uh, the emotions involved in that story, and I wanted to compliment you on that. It, it kind of softens the, uh, the, the cell, if you will. Uh, Conrad, Conrad likes to know that you're reading his work. Everybody in the, in the, in the media has an ego. Uh, print, radio, television, they like to believe that when you're writing something, when you're on television, that, that people are watching, people are tuning into you. So uh, you can never go wrong with a sincere compliment. And then what you do is you go from the compliment to pitching a story. Now, when I say pitch a story, you have to, you have, to have a story. And people always say, what, what is a story? Well, stories change, but uh, in essence, you're, you're looking for something that will cause the reporter to say, oh my goodness, where have you been all my life? That's a great story. I've been looking for something just like that. So what makes a good story? I would say uh, clubs are doing wonderful things in the community. And these wonderful feel-good stories often involve a person who benefits from our good deeds. So I like to put a face on the story. Who is benefiting from our, our charity work? If, if your nonprofit or if your uh, club is sponsoring um, scholarships, let's, let's introduce the reporter to a young lady or a young gentleman who's receiving the scholarship. I, I always tell people, act like a reporter. If you were to do the job of a reporter and you were interviewing somebody who's getting a scholarship from the club, ask the basic questions. What does this mean to you? What, what are you going to school for? What, uh, what do you hope to achieve uh, later in life? You ask the questions that the reporter would ask and then when you get a chance to actually talk to the reporter, you're basically acting as the uh, reporter's assistant. So let me do a practice pitch to Conrad. You say, Conrad, I really enjoyed the piece you did on the soldier. Uh, you captured the essence of that story, and, and that's why I want you on this story. My club sponsors scholarships. We give away five scholarships each year. And this one young lady really touched my heart. She comes from a low-income family. Uh, she would be the first generation going to college in, in, her, in her family. And when I asked her what it means for you to get this scholarship to go to college, uh, she kind of choked up and she told me that uh, it was amazing that uh, this is fulfilling uh, her parents' dream and I know, Conrad, if you called her up, you'd get the same kind of emotion. That's the kind of thing my club does. We believe in giving back. And we, we really look hard to find the most worthy recipient of the, the dollars that our club raises. What do you say, Conrad? 
Now, at this point, Conrad could say, eh, it sounds like a good story, but mm, not, not, not so much. That's okay. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't sell him a story another day or, uh, or come back with another angle. Uh, say, well, let me, let me do some homework. Let me see if I can find some other stories. But we're always doing good things in the community, Conrad. I'd love to have you on the top of my, uh, my list of people to call when we have a good story to tell. It's never going to be a bad interaction with a reporter. Uh, reporters are not going to be mean to you. They're not going to hang up on you. Don't ever call me again. And they're, they're really in the public relations business themselves. I remember when I was on Channel 4, I was always self-aware that I was representing my TV station, whether I was on the job or off the job. So even when somebody called me with a bad story idea, I was never nasty to them. I was always pleasant, and I thanked them for their time and said, I, I'll get back with you. For those, so I'm telling you that because there's a lot of fear involved in pitching the media. A lot of people talk themselves out of it. They would love it if a TV camera showed up at their fundraiser uh, or the, a local press photographer showed up to take pictures. They would love it if it just happened to them. But most people talk themselves out of going after that publicity. So let me talk about another way to get publicity. You can either sell a generic story to a reporter like the scholarship is what I would call kind of an evergreen story. It's not a gotta get it now type story. It's, an, it's a cool story, but it's not, there's no urgency to it. So what I always say to groups is sell the media what the media is buying. And on any given day, there are stories that they're shopping for. At the time of this taping, we're uh, you know, just coming off a, a couple of major tornadoes, uh, one in the Granbury and uh, Cleburne area, and then another one that hit more Oklahoma. Both big national stories, a lot of uh, news going around those events. In the first 24, 48 hours of a big story like that, the media is looking for different angles. They're looking for stories of, of people who are doing good things and answering the call for help. I remember watching uh, Channel 5 uh, last week on the Moore, Oklahoma uh, disaster, and the reporter was there watching some people put uh, water in the back of a van. It seemed like, a, I don't even remember the name of the group now, but I remember seeing a group on TV getting publicity and this reporter standing there at 5.30 in the morning interviewing them about why are you doing this. Well, that could very easily have been one of our clubs, right? It's just, it's, it's in keeping with what we do, it's in keeping with the rotary spirit, but I don't think as, as, a, as a district we were thinking like uh, a producer or a reporter in, at that point. The, the, I think as a, as a district we need to get better at uh, responding to uh, calls for help and these things happen almost on a weekly basis. So there, you've got everything from the big national disasters to local calls for help. You guys have picked up the paper before and you've seen stories about uh, like uh, food shortage at a local pantry. Let's just put into Google uh, food pantry shortage and you'll see that all over the country there are stories about local pantries suffering food shortages. When a reporter puts a story in the paper about a food shortage, they're secretly yelling into a megaphone. <laughs> Most people don't hear it, but you should hear it. The megaphone, what they're yelling is, who wants a free commercial? Who wants a free commercial? Because whoever rides to the rescue gets the free commercial. So I would urge Rotarians to, to read those local newspapers differently. Start looking at what kind of cries for help are they putting out there in the media, and is this something that we want to respond to? I, one of the things I know about Rotary is that we're very generous, and, and we can respond very quickly. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, years ago when I was on Channel 4, I would, uh, I would come to my Rotary and, and there was a big story the night before about a, a daycare center for uh, uh, children with uh, disabilities. And this daycare center was ransacked. Uh, some people had gotten broken in, uh, stolen all the laptops and equipment. They actually used a child's crib as a grocery cart as they went door to door and, and looted the place. Well, I happened to show up at Rotary the next morning 
and said, uh, we were talking about how to grow the club, how to get some media attention, and I said, did you guys see this story that I did last night on the news about this, uh, this daycare center that was ransacked? And a couple of the members had seen it. And I said, uh, we should ride to the rescue because honestly, anybody who, who responds gets the, the coverage. They said, well, what do you mean by that? I said, well, they're, they're looking to replace some of these laptops. Do we have any money in the discretionary fund? And they said, yeah. Uh, how much would we be looking at? I said, it wouldn't, it wouldn't even have to be a large check. It could be $1,000 just to get it started. So what if I say to my station that my rotary wants to challenge every other rotary in the district to step up? Um, and, and make sure that these, these children don't think that the world is a horrible place. That's not the, the feeling we want to, to leave them with. We want to let them know that the world is a good place and there are good people. So I called up my station, told them that my rotary wanted to come to the rescue. They got real excited. They said, when is the check presentation? I was kind of making it up at that point. <laughs> and so I said, uh, I think it's at 11, knowing that you know photographers get in at about 9.30. Uh, I, they said, great, Are they, they're going to give the, the check to the owners of the daycare center. I said, absolutely, 11 o'clock. And then I hung up the phone, I told my club what they were going to do, gave them the sound bites. They showed, <laughs> they showed up with this $1,000 check, just as scripted. They, they challenged every other Rotary Club in the, in the district to step up. That thing was repeated over and over and over again. It first made the 5 p.m. news, then the 6 o'clock news, then the 9 o'clock news, then the 10 o'clock news, and then it made its way into the morning show rotation, which means every half hour. 4.35, 5.36, 6.37, 7.38, 8.30. So I told my club our calculator would explode if we tried to calculate the value of that publicity. It cost us a thousand, but in terms of publicity generated to try and buy all of that advertising time uh, in all of those cycles, it was easily a hundred thousand dollar commercial for us that we got with a thousand dollars. I'm telling you that story because it's really just a matter of being uh, intentional, watching the news differently, listening to the radio differently, and saying to ourselves as Rotarians, we need to be branding ourselves as vital members of this community, people who come to the rescue, people who are involved in the community. I think all too often one of the things that we're famous for is the grip and grin photograph in the paper. If we get publicity, it's usually a couple of guys shaking hands in front of the podium because they're congratulating a, a speaker on coming in to speak. Those aren't the kinds of pictures that, that would be ideal. I think the brand that we want is an active brand of uh, pictures of Rotarians out in the community doing things. So let's switch now to Facebook, if we could. For those of you who haven't visited our Facebook page, go just Google Rotary 5810 Facebook and you'll find our Facebook page. We, uh, we've made great strides in, in recent months in terms of beefing up the number of Rotarians who are active on our Facebook page. Some of you are saying, man, I'm not on Facebook, my friends aren't on Facebook, why would we wanna, why would we wanna be on Facebook? Well, one of the brands that we're trying to achieve with Rotary is that we are young and hip, and we're part, we, we're, we're in tune with the next generation of Rotarians. Well, the next gener generation of Rotarians lives on Facebook. If you pull any young person fr from the age of 20 to 30 and ask them where are they getting their news from, they're not saying Channel 4 or Channel 5. They're talking about Facebook, they're talking about Twitter, they're talking about blogs. So this is absolutely speaking the language of our next generation of Rotarians. I like what we're doing these days. We're, we're posting pictures of uh, Rotarians in action, uh, doing fun things. Here's a picture of a go-kart. Uh, those are great pictures to post. The, the other thing that we could be doing better, I think, is is posting uh, videos. You know, these days every every smartphone has a video camera. So when you see when when your club is out there cleaning up a park, when your club is holding a blood drive, when your club is doing something, just take a couple minutes and 
and shoot a little video. It'd be very easy for you to take the video, and if you don't know how to upload it onto YouTube, you could certainly email it to the district or, or email it to me, and, and we'll get it up there. But what we want to do is, is create, I call it a party on Facebook. When young people come to a, a website or a Facebook page, they're evaluating the page based on, is this an active organization? And there have been times where it would be days and days and days between posts. It's gotten much better. We're posting daily now, which says to this next generation of Rotarian, we get you, we're listening to you, we speak your language, we're on Facebook. Uh, I, I see a lot of great pictures of uh, Rotarians out there making a difference, uh, doing action shots in their community. So how can you help? Even if you're not posting or uh, putting fresh information or pictures up there, you could do us all a favor by getting in there and liking us. It's just a, a button on the home page of, of Facebook that says, like us here. Once you like uh, our, our Facebook page, it allows you to join the conversation. Even if you're just posting something like, um, proud of you, Alan Noon Club, for doing that, you know, great, great work. That is adding to the dialogue. So when a young person comes to the website, they see not only the post, but they see this interaction between Rotarians. It feels like the party is happening. And I, I'm really proud of how far we've come and, and are now embracing this new medium. It's not going away. If anything, that's, that's, that's where everything is going, is towards social media. The best part about social media is it allows you to become a TV station to the planet. It allows you to become a newspaper publisher to the planet. These days, you can shoot a funny video of your cat and get you know, 10 million views. You've seen these YouTube videos that go viral. Why do things go viral? Because people are touched by what they're seeing, either it's funny or it's interesting or it's it's emotional, and they're sent they're they're not only liking it but they're sending it to their friends and saying you need to watch this. We can create viral videos. Uh, these days, I've seen several videos that uh, Rotary International has created that are very powerful, well done videos. Regardless of whether you you know, you, you know how to edit and put together a slick video, or if you just want to pull out your smartphone and shoot a 30 second clip of, of the rotary doing something good. You can get so much mileage out of these out of these videos and these posts, and most importantly, I think, speak to the next generation of Rotarians saying, we hear you, we're speaking your language. So one of the things that people ask me is, there, is there a good time to pitch the media versus a bad time to pitch the media? Well, when the media is obsessed with something like the Oklahoma tornadoes, you, there's that old saying, if you can't beat them, join them. Well, you're not going to beat them. You're, you're not going to get them to, to talk about anything else but that Oklahoma tornado. So you can either join the feeding frenzy and sell them what they're buying, or just lay low. So I would suggest that a bad time to pitch the media is when they're already obsessing about something else and you have nothing to contribute to that dialogue. So that's a bad time to pitch the media. Uh, good times to pitch the media uh, is around government holidays. So I know a lot of clubs do things with, uh, have a flag program. Well, obviously you can circle in, in, in you know, in, in a sharpie on your calendar all year round where those feeding frenzies about patriotism are going to be. You know, Flag Day is, is a no-brainer. Uh, Fourth of July, Memorial Day, Labor Day, those are all times when the media is going to be talking about patriotism. And those are good times for the clubs to get into the news if they're doing something on, on, uh, around the flag because of a couple of factors. One, you're talking about something that the media is already caring about, patriotism around Flag Day. But two, when you pitch the media around a, a, a government holiday like a, a, a Labor Day weekend, a Fourth of July weekend, you're taking advantage of a slow news cycle. So 
what I do is, is look at my calendar. I see pockets of slow news times. So we just came off of Memorial Day weekend, and I knew that beginning Thursday of last week, things were going to slow down for the media. Why? Because most, schools, most stories go away. Think about all the government-related stories that begin to go away approaching Memorial Day. Schools, courts, city hall, county, state, federal. Everybody kind of winds down their PR machine because nobody wants to be answering questions uh, of reporters on the Thursday or Friday before Memorial Day. They're already off to the lake. And then news doesn't pick up again till honestly the Wednesday after Memorial Day because Tuesday is a catch-up day. Everybody's coming back and answering emails, answering phone calls. So the nation works that way, but the news doesn't slow down. Around Memorial Day, around Labor Day, they don't trim their newscast. My, my old station was doing seven and a half hours of news, and I think now they're doing eight hours of news because they moved their early show to 4.30 in the morning. I don't know who's watching, but <laughs> probably, probably mom's uh, feeding in the middle of the night. So, <laughs> but eight hours of news. I, I promise you, you've never tuned into Fox 4 and heard Clarice Tinsley say the words, sorry folks, nothing happened. <laughs> Here's Gilligan's Island. I can promise you she'd love to do that because there's nothing going on sometimes, but she can't do that. They've sold the commercials, so they're locked into doing that, that amount of news. So one of the things that I suggest to clubs is take advantage of those slow news times when nobody else is feeding the media, but they have these big blocks of time that need, that need filling. So how would that uh, Memorial Day flag story play out? Uh, I'm trying to remember, do they, when do they plant the flags? Is it typically the Friday? The Friday before? Okay, that Friday is a slow day. So I, I wouldn't call up the media that morning. I would call them up the day before or even Wednesday and say, hey, I know you guys are going to be looking for uh, patriotic stories coming up on, on Memorial Day. We have a flag program. We're going to be planting X number of flags on Friday. We're going to start at this time. We're going to end at this time. We can talk about uh, everything from why we do this to flag etiquette. A lot of people are flying tattered flags. A lot of people are flying flags that aren't lit at nighttime. We could talk about the proper way to dispose of a flag. We could talk about a lot of things that that, the, that your audience needs to know about if they're going to be displaying a flag, and we'd be honored to be a part of your coverage. Well, I've seen uh, Boy Scout troops get on the local news talking about these very same things. Not to take anything away from the Scouts, they deserve all the positive publicity they can get, but we, we, we can toot our own horn too. In fact, these days I say it's more than just tooting your own horn. You need a whole orchestra. You need, <laughs> you need to strike up the band, man. <laughs> Um, and these, these layups are out there for us. We're doing so many good things. It's, it's time that we really uh, start telling our story, not only inside the district, but outside the district. How are we doing on time? Okay, we got about five minutes. Any other questions from, from the folks in the room? Anybody online with questions? We've got Charlotte, Mike Perry, Royce. And you all have to unmute yourselves. Thank you, Michael. Hello, this is, this is this is Michael. I got nothing. I just wanted you to know I was still alive. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. <laughs> so, what are, so, what are the three main, three or four major areas that you say we should concentrate on public relations wise? Well, I, I think. Let's, let's own those local papers. Uh, a lot of people ha aren't paying attention to the local papers anymore because a lot of stuff is going online. And yes, the circulation of the Dallas Morning News is shrinking. The circulation of the Plano Star Courier is shrinking. But it's still home delivered to thousands and thousands of homes. If you've ever tried to go buy a mailer, you know that it's about 75 cents per home to, to go out and print and get the US mail to deliver that. The Plano Star Courier delivers several thousand every day for free, and you get the credibility that goes along with the Plano Star Courier. Who reads the Plano Star Courier these days? Some people read it online. A lot of people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s still get it home delivered. Well, th those, those are possible Rotarians that we, we need to be reaching, right? I mean, why not? 
right? So um, let's own those local papers. Let's pay attention to what's going on in the big mainstream media, the tornadoes, the uh, the need for blood. I remember a after the uh, the uh, the bombings in Boston, uh, there was a cry for for blood, and then the West explosion, another cry for blood because so many people were hospitalized. Well, we've got blood drives going on in the di in the district right now. Uh, if we're Johnny on the spot and we we have a quick uh, blood drive in answer to that call for help, we get publicity. It, cause, it, it calls for the district to be a little bit more uh, reactionary uh, than we are. I know we plan these blood drives months in advance and we pick a date on a calendar, but uh, I would think it would be smart for us to be flexible and if something, if there's an urgent need for blood and we're, we're coming to the rescue, I can easily see a, a morning live shot reporter from 4, 5, 8, or 11 there at you know 5 in the morning interviewing a Rotarian giving blood. And we could get a bunch of people up early to give blood if we knew we were going to be on TV. I, I, that's, that's, that to me is a, right? That, that to me is a, is a no-brainer. For many years, for about, for about five years of my 25-year career, I was that poor young man standing out there in the dark in front of City <laughs> Hall talking about a, a city council meeting that wouldn't start for another eight hours. And you at home were probably wondering, why is Curly standing there in the dark eight hours before a city council meeting? <laughs> well, they made us go out there. You had, you, you, I mean, you couldn't be sitting at the desk. They wanted that live truck out there live, 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 live. So those poor young reporters that are out there at 4.30 and 5 in the morning need stories. They, they're responsible for coming up with their own story ideas. Pay attention to who is covering those things, make friends with them, and say, hey, you know, we have a bunch of Rotarians who are very active. If your story ever falls through, call us at the last minute. I'm sure we can get together something, um, you know, that would be good television for you. So own the local papers. Uh, make sure we're paying attention to the big media, the big, uh, you know, TV stations, radio stations. And then finally, let's get better at telling our story on Facebook. And that means uh, cooperation from all Rotarians. We've got 3,000 Rotarians in the district. We've got 1,300 likes so far. That means that uh, fewer than half of the Rotarians have even bothered to go on and like us. 1,300 is a lot more respectable than it was when it was when it was 300, but we can do better. And I think a goal for the district should be to have the most active, most robust Facebook page uh, on the planet of, of, all rot all, of all Rotaries. It'd be interesting to find out which Rotary, uh, let's pull up Rotary International and find out how many likes they have. That would be an interesting experiment. Last time I checked, they had an enormous number of likes, and I, I felt like the um, they were doing a good job communicating the message. It seemed like there were some conversations going on. It seemed like they were getting a lot of feedback from from the public. So, Rotary International Facebook, do you, that should be it. Let's just take a look at them. Okay, so seven seven thousand, which is not not enormous, right? Not not when you have one point one point two million, yeah. And so uh, that should be the goal for our district. Let's eclipse Rotary International for a number of likes. There's no reason why we couldn't do that. So that probably wraps it up for us. If you have any questions, feel free to, to email me, Jeff Crilly at realnewspr.com, or you can call my cell. I don't mind putting it out there, 214-226. 3327. 214 226 3327. Thanks.